Hello everyone and welcome to part two of today's history session. So we have looked at six different objects today. We have looked at the helmet, we have looked at the scepter, we have looked at the sword, we have looked at the shield, the spoons and we have looked at the coins. I am going to bring up six clues on my slide now and I want you to think which object tells us this clue. So which object tells us that the owner must have been very important out of those six? Which object tells us the owner was a king? Which object tells us that the burial must have been between AD 595 and AD 625? Which object tells us the owner was an East Anglian? Or does something else about the scene of where the ship was buried tell us the owner was an East Anglian? Next, the owner was possibly Christian at some stage. What object tells us that? And finally, what object tells us that the owner was a super king or Brett Wilder? Now, a Brett Wilder is the same as a super king, just someone with a really, really high importance. So I want you to pause the video. Which of those six objects um, tell us which clue? Pause the video now and have a think. Okay, let's have a look then. So which clue tells us that the owner was very important? Well, that is both the sword and the helmet because of the materials that made it but also the purpose. What was the purpose of having a sword and a helmet? That's right, they could be a warrior, they could be fighting. Which, which object tells us our next clue, I wonder? Ah, the scepter tells us the owner was a king because remember, only kings or queens or people with really high power like royalty would have a scepter. That would be something that they had. So that tells us they were a king. So what tells us that it was between these two dates? Which object helped us to find out dates? That's right, it was the coins. The coins had dates on them. There were 37 gold coins which had dates to say when the burial must have been between. What's our next clue then? How do we know that this was, this person was East Anglian? Where was Sutton Hoo? It was in Suffolk, but where? Yes, in East Anglia. And that tells me the fact that their burial was in East Anglian territory suggests the owner was an East Anglian. Now that was the catch here because we didn't give you a specific object for this one. Next one then, what tells us our next clue? The owner was possibly Christian at some stage. The spoons do. They had Paul and Saul inscribed in them and that suggested that they were Christian, but possibly pagan too. And finally, what suggests that they were a super king or a Brett Wilder? That's absolutely right, the shield. But also, the sheer wealth and status of the object suggest he was more than just a local king. He was that super king, the Brett Wilder. Okay, so when the scene happened, artists have tried to recreate this scene. They've tried to recreate the boat and some of the objects inside. And I just want you to take a moment, what can you see here? Look at all the people who are really interested in this. Look at some of the objects inside the boat. Can you recognise any? Pause the video and have a little bit of a look, please. Okay, how about the next one then? This is something else that an artist has recreated of the scene. You can see the size of the ship is huge. You can see some of the objects inside which um, were mentioned in the video, part of the video that you watched as well. They are all there. But also there's lots and lots of people around the scene who are really, really interested. This was one of probably Britain's biggest significant archaeological sites. And it was such a significant event that lots and lots of Anglo-Saxon people had to come and have a look. Now, we are going to find out who he was now. There are four possible people that it could be. But before we look at them, let's remind ourselves of what we are looking for. We are looking for someone who is very important. We are looking for a king, but most importantly, a super king or Brett Wilder. We are looking for someone who was in charge or alive around AD 595 and AD 625. We are looking for someone who was East Anglian and we are also looking for someone who was possibly Christian but also pagan too. Let's have a look at the possible candidates then. 
the first one. The first one is Sigbert. Now, Sigbert was the first English king to receive a Christian baptism. Sigbert of East Anglia, also known as Saint Sigbert, was king of East Anglia from uh, 629 to 634. Have a think, do any of these things that we know about Sigbert match up with what we know about this person in the burial? Pause the video now and have a think. Did you recognise that Sigbert was very important because he was a king? He was East Anglian because we know that he um, was Sigbert of East Anglia. He was also Christian at some stage, we know this. However, C and F, the clues do not match up. We have not been said told that he was a super king and the dates do not match up to when he was around either because he was king from 629 to 634, which is after 625. Okay, let's have a look at the next person. Maybe it might give us a bit more help with the next one. The next one is Eorpwold. Now, Eorpwold was the son of Raidwold. So that is another person that is one of our candidates for today. And he was ruled as king of East Anglia from 624 to 627. How many years is that? Mm, not very long, three years only. And he received Christian teaching and he was Christian in his ways. Hmm, we might have a bit more information here about Eopwald. Pause the video, is there anything that matches up to the clues that we've found? Could it be him? Pause the video now and have a think. Okay, well let's have a look at our clues again. Well, Eopwald was very important because he was a king. He was also East Anglian and he could have been possibly Christian. However, like our previous candidate, the dates don't match up and he was not a super king or a Brett Walzer either. Oh my goodness, I am crossing my fingers that the next two are going to be more likely to be the person in the burial. Are you? Let's have a look and be more detectives then. The next person is Raidwald. Now Raidwald was king of the East Angles from AD 600 until 624 when he died. He was a Bretwalder. He was a superior king, the best of the best. And he was converted to Christianity, but was thought to have gone back to being a pagan. Is there anything here that makes you think, hmm, thinking about our clues, could it be Raidwald? Pause the video and have a think. Let's have a look at again at our clues. Ah, oh, so Raidwald was very important. He was a king and the dates do match up because Raidwald was from 600 to 624, which matches almost identically 595 to 625. We know he was East Anglian, and he was a Christian at some point, and then he changed to being a pagan. And we also know that he was a Brett Walder. <gasps> Who do you think it might be? We've still got one more person. Let's not rule the last person out. Let's have a look at the final person. The final person is Offa. Offa was a Brett Walder. He was a king who had power over other kings in England. He was a superior king, but he was a king of Mercia. So Mercia, not East Anglia, from AD 757 until 796. And many historians think Offa was the most powerful Anglo-Saxon king before Alfred the Great, who we're going to be learning about in a few lessons. Now, does Offer have any of the qualities that we're looking for in our person? Pause the video and have a think. Okay, so Offer must have been important because he was the king. However, the dates do not match up because he was around 757 to 796, which is well off these two dates. Now, he was a Brett Walder, he was a super king, but he wasn't East Anglian, was he? He was from Mercia so it could not have been him. Now, thinking of all four people that we've looked at today, I would like you to tell the screen, do you think it's A, Sigbert, B, Eorpwald, C, Raidwald, or D, Offer. Pause the video, gather your thoughts, and when I say three, two, one, you've got to tell the screen, who is the owner of that burial? Ready? Three, two, one. <gasps> Wow, I heard all of your fantastic um, 
thoughts then. Well done. Now, we are going to find out who it was. So let's bring our video back up. We'll probably never know for sure, but scholars have long suggested the name of Redvald, King of the East Angles from 599 to 624. This fits with the coins which date from the first quarter of the 7th century. According to the Venerable Bede, Redvald converted to Christianity but still worshipped his pagan gods as well. Certainly the grave has a pagan feel, but also contains items like a pair of christening spoons. The Frankish coins could be significant because we know the Franks were helping bring Christianity to the Anglo-Saxons. But... Okay, so we have found out that it was in fact Raidwald. Wow, so if you got that correct, well done and you are a super detective. Now, your task today, you have two tasks. Your first task is to look at the following clues that we have spent all lesson looking about. I would like you to write two sentences for each clue. What do they tell us about the type of person at the Sutton Hoo burial? And we've done lots of work on that today. And your second task is you are going to present a 45 second presentation as if you are reporting from the site of the ship board, uh, burial. I want you to imagine that you've just discovered this ship burial. You need to talk with excitement as if you've just discovered the objects and the identity. Now I've given you a three part structure in case you're stuck. So your first part is to talk about what you found. So the mound, who excavated it, so Basil Brown, but then he asked a man, another archaeologist, Charles Phillips, to help him because he needed help. They then found a ship burial, but no body. There are lots of different objects in and around the ship. And when you've given them a brief outline of what first you found, then you talk about the objects that you've found and what they show you. So all of these objects here will be in your presentation. And then you say, it was King Raidwald, and I know this because, and how you know it. So you might want to go back to where we found out about King Raidwald and write some notes on this too. If you would like to write your notes down on a piece of paper before recording, of course do that and then you can send in your fabulous reports. You do have one final task for your history lesson today, and that is your mid-unit assessment. This is your final one of this week, and you've been working so super hard on them. The first one is just a circle question, circle A, B or C. The second one, you need to finish the sentence to this, uh, finish the sentence by adding one word here. This one, you tick all of the jobs that an Anglo-Saxon might have had, here we're looking at the Anglo-Saxon house. I have drawn lines to each part of the Anglo-Saxon house. So the fish, um, the, stra uh, the straw, the bed, the fire and the barrels. What do each of these tell you about an Anglo-Saxon house? And finally, we know that the Anglo-Saxons divided Britain into seven kingdoms. Can you remember the seven kingdoms? And I've given you some clues here as well. So that is your task for today. Your final plenary then. So this is a picture of Raidwald or what we know of what he looked like. He was the first person and he was the person at Sutton Who. But what clues have helped us to arrive at this conclusion? Pause the video and have a think. Okay, you might have had lots of different clues. You might have said that the dates match up on the coins. You might have said that he was a super king. He was a Brett Walder. You might have said that he was very powerful. He was a powerful man. He was also East Anglian. And he also had lots of great armour and weapons, which suggested that he might have been very rich. Thank you for listening. Have a lovely rest of your lesson and your day. And I will see you in our next lesson. Goodbye, year four.